right, it's clear that the arts are a force in this region, but for the first time ever, the full financial picture is coming into focus. WGBH News arts editor Jared Bowen briefs us now on the Arts Factor, a report released today by the nonprofit Arts Boston. The arts. It can be a nebulous term, including everything from street performances to grand concerts, fringe theater companies to big Broadway-bound shows, local artists dotting canvases to masters gracing museum walls. What's no longer nebulous, though? The arts are an economic engine. A new report by the nonprofit group Arts Boston reveals the arts are a $1.4 billion annual industry in Greater Boston. That's no surprise to developer and philanthropist Ron Drucker. And I think one of the reasons why we have new flights coming in from Dubai and from Beijing and from Istanbul and from Tokyo is not only because of the meds and ads, the hospitals and educational institutions, but also because of the cultural institutions. Ten years ago, Drucker's company built the Calderwood Pavilion, a theatrical space, alongside a luxury residential building in the South End. It created an arts hive that helped transform the then blighted neighborhood. There's no question that the arts component to this project created value for us. And it created value in terms of being an anchor, uh, attracting people for our restaurants. It created value in terms of people uh, who live in the condominiums above liked being associated with an arts institution. As do millions in the region. The report also reveals that Greater Boston has more arts and cultural groups per capita than any other U.S. city. 18 million people a year attend the arts, with 7 million experiencing them for free. But on average, ticket prices cover only 30 percent of production costs. You actually literally can't imagine how hard it is and how much work it is. Last year, Olivia D'Ambrosio co-founded Bridge Rep, a brand new theater company with five shows under its belt, including the just-opened Gideon's Knot. The fledgling group has already managed to reach an enviable 80 percent attendance in its small Calderwood space. That's despite a daunting and crowded arts landscape, she says. The more arts there are, the more they actually all benefit each other. I don't really see it as competition. When other other theaters do well or do a good production, those people that they've served are like, oh, I love theater. What else could I go see, right? With early success, D'Ambrosio is committed to her company, just as Drucker, whose name graces many an institution across the city, continues a decades-long philanthropic investment in the arts. People enjoy being entertained, and they enjoy, enjoy being challenged, uh, and that's something which won't change. And the vehicle and the medium uh, media might, might, might change, but I don't think it will never change that people want to be entertained. Now, just to put this whole report into context to Emily, the 18 million people number that we just showed for people visiting the arts annually, that's four times as much as all four Boston mm -hmm. professional sports teams combined. Yeah, Mayor Benito loves that statistic. <laughs> all right, Jared Bowen, thanks for that. All right, I'm joined now by uh, Catherine Peterson. She's the executive director of Arts Boston and Robert Gallery, the president of Massachusetts Bank of America, which is a major supporter of the arts. And he is also on our board of overseers. Welcome to both of you. So when I hear, Catherine, for instance, that ticket uh, prices only account for 30 percent of this, who and what makes up the rest of it? Well, it's actually organizations like Bank of America uh, and our other wonderful corporations here in Boston. It's government, it's foundations, but it's also individuals. And we're very fortunate here in Boston to have very generous individuals. So how does, this, how does the wealth spread, though, Bob? All right, $1.4 billion, that sounds like a lot. But many of these institutions struggle, as we know. Not the big ones like necessarily MFA or even you know, ART or some of those, but some of these small, like that Olivia D'Ambrosio story. story. I mean, how, 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 how does she benefit from this? Well, I think uh, Catherine's called it the ecosystem, and the ecosystem's really quite strong. And I think, uh, I can't speak to every single organization, but as in many other sectors within our economy, you can see that kids come here in part, you know, go to an Emerson. Uh, you can see that, that having a range of opportunities in those organizations, big and small, gives them a better chance to stay here, to really get started, and I think that's good for all of us as well. Other than restaurants, <laughs> what's the trickle-down effect for the arts? Who else, what other, what 
greater communities uh, gain from this? Uh, certainly our tourism community. We know that it's the third largest industry in the state. And we know that people who come here and go to an arts performance, go to a museum, they stay longer and they spend more money. So, Bob, obviously, Bank Boston, has, Bank of America has done a lot. You, you were the pavilion. You've done all these other things. If it weren't for these big institutions like yours, though, that, that generously give hundreds of thousands, millions, would, would this just be people having to philanthropically give out of their own pockets? Well, I think, as Catherine said, that happens already. It's a blend. Um, but to, to somebody like us, we both support the organizations, but we also think it's important uh, there's an economic impact, which really comes out in this report better than it has before. We've talked about it anecdotally before. Now we've got some facts and figures to sort of put it in scale. 25,000 direct employees, you know, workers. And that's, that's important. But then it's the quality of life for all of us, for our own employees, for our customers. And I think, uh, again, it's not just what we do, but think of the other great companies, State Street and Liberty and yep. so many. I don't want to leave any, any out. <laughs> uh, the foundations, as Catherine mentioned. The collaboration between public and private and not for profit is really important. It's one of the things that makes Boston strong overall, but I think you really see it in the arts. And, you know, I wouldn't rule GBH oh, out yeah. of that. I mean, you know, we, we all we, we love our sports teams and they have a tremendous amount of clout in this city. Does this report kind of transfer to the arts community? Does it give them automatically more clout or is it still kind of a little bit amorphous because people can't name, you know, the director necessarily of some of these, you know, the MFA, I mean, we all can, but, you know, not, it's, it's not like, you know, John Farrell or somebody, somebody can go right to it and say, oh, that guy's this. You know what, I don't think, I, I as, a, as a huge Patriots and Red Sox fan and, and Celtics also, and occasionally the Bruins, I am so glad that we have our amazing sports teams, but I'm really glad that we have Andres <laughs> Nelson's coming in Andres. as our new music director yeah. at the BSO, and I'm glad that we have Jill Medvedel as a superstar Medvedel. director at the ICA. Yeah. So, you know what? I think we can uh, we can have both living side by side. All right. And I bet if you had the owners of the sports teams here, they would all say the same in reverse. It just makes us stronger yeah, to have it, both. That's great. All right. Bob Gallery, Catherine Peterson. Thanks so much.